Okay, thank you very much. So uh, the title of my talk is very ambitious, but uh, really this is just things that I'm interested in and I'll talk about that very specific discourse. Um, so I'll start by just giving the very, very basics of uh, finite and pseudo-finite fields and model theory. Then I'll talk about uh, the definable measure in pseudo-finite fields, which is a really interesting object from the point of view of model theory. And then I will talk about the application, which is to algebraic regularity and polynomial expansion. So uh, the general question is how does model theory control combinatorial phenomena in finite fields? Um, so the maybe one particularity of model theory is that we're interested in specific formula uh, in finite fields. So we really choose one formula and then we work with that. So we're going to study, well, we're going to give ourselves the language of a first order logic uh, in the language of rings. So we're allowed to form formulas out of these symbols. We have Conjunction, disjunction, implication, universal quantification, existential, and then we have zero, one equals plus times. Uh, fine. Um, given uh, formula phi of x and a finite field fq, phi of fq is just a set of elements which satisfy phi. And to give an example, consider the formula with two free variables, phi of xy, which says that there exists a z such that x plus y equals z squared. Then uh, phi of, well, the solution set of phi, we can think of as a graph and is the set of pairs such that x plus y is a quadratic residue. This is called the Pady graph and I'll mention this uh, a couple more times uh, in this talk. Okay, um, so what do we do in model theory with uh, finite fields? Well, we don't take an individual finite fields, we take a whole sequence. Uh, an arbitrary sequence of finite fields. Uh, we don't need to care about the characteristic now. And we give ourselves an ultra filter on the natural numbers. And we form a limit object, which we're going to call k star. This is the ultra product of the kn along u. I'm not going to define this exactly, but it's a certain quotient of the Cartesian product of all the kn uh, given by u. Um, k star has uh, the property that if phi is any sentence in the language of rings, then k star satisfies phi, if and only if uh, the set of n such that kn satisfies phi is in our ultra filter. So this means that kn, uh, k star uh, only sees asymptotic first order properties of the kns. Um, we say that k star is a pseudo finite field. Uh, the following properties are not, well, uh, of k star are kind of remarkable. These are important. k star is perfect. Uh, k star is pseudo algebraically closed. And uh, the absolute Galois group of k star is uh, z hat, uh, the profinite completion of sets. Uh, so, uh, very classical results in model theory. Uh, this is an axis theorem uh, which shows that these properties atomatize uh, pseudo finite fields. Right, so the theory of all pseudo-finite fields satisfies these statements, and it's already a good uh, exercise to check that these statements are uh, axiomatizable in first-order logic in the language of rings. Perfect is pretty easy, and the other two are kind of interesting, if you're not really familiar with this. When you say Kn satisfies phi, previously you had phi of fq, and that was the set of elements in fq that satisfies yeah. you went all the elements. Yeah, so that's a good point. So in the previous slide, I was talking about formulas, and here I'm talking about sentences. So these don't have any free variables. Okay. So this is going to be for all i, for all i, for all y, there exists a z, that's that. Okay. Uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, okay. So we can just talk about the structure satisfying the sentence. Pseudo algebraically closed. Uh, this means that any uh, variety over our field, which is absolutely irreducible, so which is irreducible over k ouch, uh, contains uh, a rational point in k star. And you don't like quark characteristic zero, so it can be characteristic. That's right. Yeah. Uh, pseudo, uh, yeah. So we can see that these <coughs> statements are also satisfied by any finite field. Right, this doesn't force the field to be infinite. Uh, finite fields are pseudo finite and they can have any characteristic. Um, okay, so this is very much the kind of classical algebraic side of the model theory of uh, finite fields. And now we're going to look at some slightly more recent, recent things which are more on the combinatorial side. Um, so first to recall a classical result from uh, Lang and Vale, uh, let X be a variety over a finite field FQ. Then if X is absolutely irreducible and has dimension D, 
then the number of points in X is approximately Q to the D with error rate uh, Q to the D minus a half. And here O only depends on the degrees of the polynomial defining X. So this is, I mean, yeah, this is interesting. Um, this talks about varieties, but again, we're interested in formulas. And it turns out that the Langville estimates can be extended to definable sets. This is a result from a Katsudakis, Fenton, Fries, and McIntyre. So let 5xy be a formula in the language of rings. Uh, there is a finite set of pairs di mu i, where so d is going to be a dimension, mu i is going to be a measure. And there is a definable partition of y. So in the di of y, y is the domain of uh, our little variable y, such that uh, in any finite field fq, for any uh, parameter b, phi of fq against b has roughly size mu i q to the di, uh, with error rate uh, big O of uh, q to the di minus a half. And uh, the mu i and di are determined by the elements of the partition in which b lies. OK, basically, this is the generalization of uh, Langville to definable sets. To give an example, we had the Paley graph uh, before. Uh, mu, uh, mu i for the Paley graph uh, is a, a half, right? So with probability a half, uh, x plus y is a quadratic residue uh, in any, uh, well, in large enough finite fields. Um, OK, and uh, so here, uh, mu i is an approximation of the size of phi. But what's interesting, so in the previous slide, we had ultra products. Um, really, when we move to an ultra product, mu i becomes an exact measure. Uh, we have measure spaces, and uh, there's all sorts of interesting things we can do with uh, uh, this measure. It's called definable because the measure is determined by a definable property of b. Uh, and definable measures and uh, Keesler measures in general have been a very rich object of study <clears throat> in model theory. There's uh, yeah, lots of interesting things to do there. Um, but OK, and one application of uh, this definable measure is a same already style regularity lemma uh, in finite fields due to Terence Tau. So let's take now a formula 5xy in x times y, which we're going to think of as a definable graph. Then there is some n and definable partitions of x and y into xi and yi, such that for every pair ij, so the induced subgraph of phi restricted to the xi and yj is approximately regular in the sense of uh, Zemerady. So I'm going to show the definition in a second, but if you've never seen the definition, maybe it's a lot to take into. Before that, I'll just point out in the classical Zemerady regularity lemma, uh, this, we don't have uh, for every pair ij. We only know that for most pairs ij, we have regularity. And uh, the error bounds on regularity with the classical Zemerady are nowhere near as good as this. So this is a, a very strong form. OK, and this is, what does it mean to be regular with the uh, error Q to the minus a quarter? This means that for any subset A of Xi, B of Yj, the size of phi restricted to A times B is roughly the, well, what you would expect if phi was random. So it's the fraction of A times B over Xi times Yj times the size of the total reduced subgraph. And the error rate is Q to the D minus a quarter. OK. With this O, it means that in practice, you exclude finitely many finite fields. Yeah, this means up to a constant. Yes. Yeah. So um, do you have any bond on how many finite fields to exclude? No. So, uh, ah. Uh, no, I don't think. Well, in print, this really comes from a uh, Langveil, and mm -hmm. in there, everything is known, I think. So, in principle, you could uh, you could get uh, effective bounds out of it. Yes. And, but you don't have to exclude finitely many characteristics. No, 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 no. This is for any characteristic. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, I'm glossing over some details, but uh, we have a strong result for every characteristic. In the original Tau paper, there was, a, for example, I, don't, I think he excluded characteristic two, but this turns out to be OK. Um, OK, and just to give an example, uh, so this is a classical result of Bolabash and Thomason. 
which says that the Pavy graph behaves like a random graph where they, they have very quantitative bounds on the error of, uh, on randomness. But this says that the Pavy graph is a uh, regular in the sense of the Brady with error Q to the minus a half. Uh, note that a half is not a quarter. Uh, it's actually an open question to know if we can improve the quarter here. The reason we have a quarter is because in the background, there's lots of Cauchy Schwartz uh, arguments happening. Um, and I think it's uh, generally in this area of combinatorics, uh, knowing when Cauchy Schwartz is optimal is uh, unknown. Sorry, what, what is the size of capital N? Uh, capital N, uh, well, depends uh, how closely. In reality, N is uh, related to certain numbers of irreducible components of varieties uh, involved in the definition of phi. This is kind of technical. But it'll have minimal dependence on Q. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't depend on Q. It only depends on phi, and N only depends on the degrees of the polynomials involved in phi. Okay, um, let's mention an application. Uh, so Tao, uh, in the same paper, used the algebraic regularity lemma to derive uh, polynomial expansion results in finite fields. Okay, so now let P of xy be a polynomial over fq. Then P satisfies one of the following. Either P has additive structure, which means P of xy is q of f1 of x plus f2 of y for some polynomials q f1 f2 or P is multiplicative, P of X, Y is Q of F1 of X times F2 of Y, or uh, P has a moderate expansion property. For some constant, uh, for any subsets A1, A2 of FQ, which are sufficiently large, uh, the size of the image of P applied to A1 and A2 is bigger than Q over this constant. Um, you can see that these are distinct by considering um, arithmetic or geometric uh, sequences. Uh, so additive and multiplicative are never uh, moderate expanders. Okay, um, so now we can talk about uh, current and future work. Uh, in the original Tau paper, uh, Tau asked if the algebraic regularity lemma could be extended to definable hypergraphs. Um, so this is uh, this was answered affirmatively in a work I did with uh, Elad Levy. Uh, there is lots of uh, interesting uh, technical details, and one maybe you should say caveats. Uh, it turns out, uh, for example, the partitions of the hypergraphs are not definable in the classical sense. There's some Itao uh, business which uh, creeps in. Uh, the error bounds are not as good as uh, what we would have hoped. Et cetera, et cetera, but essentially uh, this turns out to be true. Um, an interesting related uh, topic. Uh, so the original algebraic regularity lemma holds in many model theoretic situations owing to stability, which is a fundamental combinatorial notion in model theory. Okay, so this is very elliptic. Um, what I mean here is, uh, after Tao published uh, his proof of the outer regularity lemma, the model theory uh, community got to work to try and understand what was going on there. He, the original proof was uh, very long and quite complicated. And this was eventually boiled down to uh, purely combinatorial properties of the definable measure, which we introduced before. The key property of the definable measure was that for a single formula phi of xy, mu of phi of xb can take only finitely many values as v varies. Uh, so, and, and this turns out to be an instance of uh, stability, stability which is a certain graph theoretic notion in model theory. And here actually stability comes from uh, constraints of, uh, constraints of Hilbert space uh, geometry. So it was kind of a, an exotic mix of, uh, of uh, topics here. Um, but so, one open question that remains after uh, having done the work on uh, the hypergraph uh, algebraic regularity lemma is, can algebraic hypergraph regularity be related to higher combinatorial notions in the same way that the original algebraic regularity lemma was related to stability? Uh, this is a uh, very natural project in model theory. Uh, there's already been quite a lot of work um, 
on uh, Zemirady hypergraph regularity and uh, higher uh, combinatorial notions. Uh, for example, uh, Artem Chernikov uh, and Henry Tausner and others uh, uh, studied uh, uh, NIP and uh, higher NIP properties with uh, hypergraph regularity. Uh, Julia Wolf, uh, Caroline Terry, and others, others uh, are looking for generalizations of stability to hypergraph regularity. And uh, it's still an open question to see how this uh, works with the algebra in the algebraic case, because the proof uh, in our paper was a uh, very uh, algebraic and not at all combinatorial. Okay, and maybe another open question to finish. Uh, this is work in progress. What does the algebraic regularity lemma have to say about polynomial expansion? Can we expect new uh, kinds of results about polynomial expansion uh, based on hypergraph regularity? Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Say, owing to stability, which is the theory that is stable? So it's a specific formula that's stable. Uh -huh. uh, so this is local stability. There is no, uh, well, you could argue that the theory of, so uh, do you know what stability is? Okay, well, algebraically closed fields, the theory of algebraically closed fields, this is stable. And um, very often, well, uh, to a certain extent, algebraically closed fields control certain behavior that we observe in pseudo-finite fields. Um, for example, amalgamation problems, uh, which are essential in this, uh, in this case, uh, are governed by uh, ACF phenomena. Um, but really, in this case, the very specific use of stability that we need is related to the measure. Um, so in the sense of continuous logic, uh, Hilbert spaces are stable, probability algebras are stable, and other notions. And the single uh, measure formula, this is just uh, talking about the configuration of vectors inside a given Hilbert space. Uh, and this is where the stability comes from. It was very surprising, I think. Uh, I mean, it took a few years to really kind of clarify this uh, because people working in algebra weren't at all expecting uh, this kind of interaction. Yeah, so um, in classical similarities, <clears throat> this was generalized to hypergraphs. I mean, in several ways, but um, somehow there you always need to look at expansion of pairs in some sense. So, what kind of thing is happening here with the regularity lemma for hypergraphs? Can you, like, what exactly? So, yeah. I mean, it's a general question. So somehow, you, is there a, so the previous one somehow relates to the usual, somewhat to the usual similarity regularity. So, does this in some sense relate to the usual uh, hypergraph regularity? What relates? The so, your result with the regularity lemmas for uh, definable hypergraphs. It's a shot in the dark. Yeah. Well. Uh, so the, re the, the result says, you know, given a definable hypergraph, you can partition it in the usual sense so that every induced subgraph is uh, Zimmerady regular uh, in the sense of, uh, of all the people who discovered a uh, higher hypergraph regularity. Okay, so uh, you are doing the same. For yeah, it's, it's really the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. So this is a miss from uh, what exactly is. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I wanted to spare you the, the technical definitions. Just was wondering if you get something nice. Uh, we strengthen the usual hypergraph regularity lemma in exactly the same way that Tau's regularity lemmas. I mean, not saying this is like a super nice. So uh, mostly just because there you need to expand these multiple things and that becomes a bit better. Yeah, so. yeah, we can talk about it. Uh, yeah. Sure, sure. Cool. Thanks. All right, let's thank all of us again.